Hello everybody, welcome back to another pickups video. This pickups video is going to be pretty massive, so uh, I was actually going to like uh, do a couple pickups videos and release these periodically, but I decided this is just do one, knock the stuff out of the way so I get this stuff put up, so I just want to go ahead and get started. First thing I want to show you here, uh, you probably saw this on the channel before, Full Blast. Uh, now this is a shoot 'em up uh, this um, was published, well, well the, the physical copy was published by Red Art Games. And um, I would say it's more of a generic shoot 'em up. Um, it's it's decent. I, it has some good qualities to it, but if they're playing something like Calder's Blaze or Clatter's whatever it's called or something like that, you know, going back to playing something like this is kind of like mediocre. But uh, for people who want to start to get in shooters, maybe this is a solid game. Well, I shouldn't even say that. This game feels like it recycles a lot of stuff over and over again. I mean, so far from what, what I've seen, this game only has like three different looking levels. So. First three levels look the same. They might reverse some of the stuff or change the nighttime or daytime or whatever. But other than that, you know, it's just kind of generic. It's not saying it's bad, but you know, one thing I did like about it is one of those shoot 'em up games which, where you can actually look at the back. You can actually see what's going on in the backgrounds and stuff like that without stuff scrolling by so fast. So, full blast for PS4. Um, give it a go if you want to maybe get start to get into shoot 'em ups. I mean, like I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> Next game here. A stay. I also talked about this game. This is more of a uh, psychological horror game where think about uh, the movie Saw and like the first Saw when they were trapped in, in the room together. But think of it as your one guy trapped in a room with a computer pretty much and that's his only contact uh, with somebody which is you, your character is the person typing on the other side of the computer pretty much. So this game kind of plays in real time. Uh, basically you're trying to help a character named Quinn. He's stuck in a, he's stuck in he's trapped somewhere and he's trying to keep his sanity and you're trying to like help him get out of his situation um so when you what i mean by real time is if you if you turn the game off and you don't play it for a week quinn could be either be dead or he could just not trust you anymore say i'm cutting all contact whatever game over or stuff like that so it's a game you have to kind of continually play till the end has some clever puzzles and stuff like that has some weird stuff going on i mean because you're trapped in that basement but you're trapped down there with other things that are actually alive so it's pretty creepy so anyway stay for the switch and ps4 uh give it a go from red art games i'll leave a link if you want to pick up some red art game stuff um and here's the last red art games uh red art game i got uh Gakito, um urban well not urban fighters uh, uh kantaro's revenge uh this is a sequel or a side story to uh Gakito urban fighters uh for the ps1 i hope i said the name right i can't yeah, I've always messed it up. But that game was a really good 3D uh, beat-em-up game. Uh, a lot of people, when you think of 3D beat-em-ups, you probably think of like a Fighting Force, which was pretty mediocre. Um, the first levels, first couple levels are cool in that game, then it just gets like weird after that. But Kikido actually did a really good job. That game's a lot of fun, and it has an awesome soundtrack and, and everything. It's Fat Boy Slim's on there. So this game came out, originally came out for the Game Boy Advance. Um, they ported it to the newer generation of systems. They... Gave it a two-player mode, which it desperately needed. If you're going to have a beat-em-up game, you want to have two-player mode going. But the problem with this game that I noticed is that the graphics are pretty much the same. They tried to touch them up, but you can tell it's like an older game, of course. And beat-em-up games are generally, you know, beat-em-up games where you don't have to have any platforming. This game has platforming in it on some point, so it just feels really off. But it mixes things up, but it just doesn't feel right in this game. But I still do like the game, but... It's definitely not one of my favorite beat 'em ups, a uh, uh, 2D beat 'em ups. It's, it's it's something I would probably play last. But other than that, it's it's still a solid game, guys. You check it out. Let me know what you think of it. All right, I gotta put this stuff down. All right, so oh, here's some cool stuff. Some some more shoot 'em ups here. Uh, recently, uh, my buddy Ryan from Toy Box Games, he got a big trade in from somebody uh, that had all their they traded in all their shoot 'em ups. 
And he asked the guy, like, well, why, why are you trading all these shoot 'em ups and everything? Or where'd you, he said, where'd you get them from or something like that? He said, yeah, I bought them because I was watching the Metal Jesus channel. I saw Reggie on there, and I bought all this stuff and everything. And he had never really played it. He bought the stuff, but it's kind of like it was just sitting there. So I was like, wow. So he decided to give it up. And he traded into Ryan. And I saw a couple of titles in there I needed. So um, first one, um, I'm going to say Ginga Force. Uh, uh, Ginga, Ginga Force, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one, I didn't really like when I played it a few years ago. Um, I thought it was like this too crazy. But now I'm starting to like it a little bit more. You just got to take your time with this one. You know, a uh, very solid game. Uh, only on the 360 as far as I know. Um, but it has a lot of talking uh, while you're, you're playing the game. Like your characters are talking between each other. So there's like the little story bits and everything. So it could get c confusing with stuff popping up on the screen. But it's not too bad. But this is what I would consider a, a somewhat bullet hell. Because there's stuff all over the screen. And sometimes you don't know if it's an item you pick up for points. Or a freaking bullet that's trying to kill you. So... Be careful with this game because bullets are all over the place. But it is a lot of fun, so definitely check it out. And next one here, uh, I, I know I'm not going to uh, say this one right. But um, this is the Shooting Love, I believe, uh, 10th Anniversary. And um, it has two games on it. And I just, like I said, this is another one I was missing. I decided to pick this one up. This one doesn't look as good as the newer Shooting Love. This is kind of an older game, but still something I wanted to pick up. And uh, I got it out of the way, so I think uh, only uh, Xbox 360 games I'm missing as far as shooters that I want uh, is the uh, Bullet Soul, and then there's no, I think Bullet Soul is it, and then I'll have all I want on that system. So yeah, just one more. I was hoping that was going to be in there, but he didn't get to that one. All right, so next up here, I got uh, Powerpuff Girls for PlayStation. This was five dollars. I said, why not? You know. PlayStation game hadn't got one in a while, so I decided to pick it up. This is more of like a, an arena beat 'em up game, I would say. It's one player, maybe it's two players through um, through a multiplayer or whatever. Here, there's multiplayer here, some kind of arena battle. Yeah, one or two players. Um, Powerpuff Girls, um, they were they were pretty popular back in the day, but I just I never played this one, so I wanted to check it out. It's cool. It has a little intro in it, the Powerpuff Girls uh, uh, a show and everything. But as far as being a good game, I'll let you guys decide about that one. I mean, this is something, I mean, it's not going to be the first thing you pop in when you think about an arena fighting game. But still, if, you like, if you're a fan of that franchise, the Powerpuff Girls, there you go. All right. So um, I actually had this one, and this one got lost a couple years ago. I don't know what happened to it, but I picked it up again because um, I found it for cheap. Rise of Tomb Raider for the 360. Now, uh, when Microsoft got that exclusive deal, uh, PlayStation owners didn't weren't able to get Rise of Tomb Raider when it first came out. I was feeding to play it because I love the other Tomb Raider so much, and you'll meet like the the regular Tomb Raider game. Uh, the, the, I would call I'm gonna call it the Tomb Raider Survival Series. So basically, in that game, Laura was stuck on an island with her friends, which was great, and you're discovering the island, trying to find all your friends and everything, and, and escape. It was a really well game. I'm put together game pretty much. I really enjoyed it a lot. And then this one came out, and I enjoyed it a lot too. You know, um, the only option was to, to get this was uh, either on 360 or Xbox One. I don't have an Xbox One, so I picked this one up, and I played it, loved it. Uh, very good game. Uh, definitely, um, they didn't skimp on the graphics with this game. They actually put a lot of detail on the 360 version. Because usually, when companies um, have a, a, a more powerful system, they'll kind of like like don't do as much work on the uh, previous gen version. But this one actually damn near looks identical to the Xbox One version in some points. Not, it's not the. I mean, it's not better looking, but in some points it looks up to par pretty much. So definitely they did, they did a good job on this game. Rise of Tomb Raider. You guys know about Tomb Raider games. They're on point. All right. So um, this one I actually talked about in the video too. Uh, this is the Atelier um, um, a trilogy, Dust Trilogy games. Um, I played uh, the Atelier Iris games back when they were on a. On the PS2, and I there were three of them that I played. Um, uh, I played the first two. The third one was kind of weak, um, but uh, these games actually look really good. And uh, not only are you getting three games in the series, that you're getting all the DLC on one SD card. So uh, good job for Play Asian for putting this together. Uh, but unfortunately, if you do buy this game, you open it up, you're not even getting the manual. So. Yeah, they, I mean, for the price they were at the time that they were charging for this, man, they could have threw a manual in here or something. But, hey, I mean, they'll figure people will buy it for this price, so we'll see what happens. But, anyways, uh, if you like those type of RPGs, um, check this one out. 
they they basically mainly I would say like uh, you play as an alchemist and you make all these different like concoctions of uh, of spells and great healing items stuff like that for other characters and yourself. Really, they are really good looking games. Sometimes these games are so popular. Sometimes they they come out like twice a year with like one game earlier in the year and then later in the year they come out with another one. So pretty popular series, especially ever since the PS2 era, from what I've seen. So like I said, check that one out if you're interested in that series. I got this one for a great deal on OfferUp, uh, Game Boy Advance game in box, and you guys know how I feel about Game Boy games in box. Uh, the Berenstein Bears, a spooky old tree. Now, this was five dollars, so I couldn't pass it up. And the gameplay looks pretty decent. You control uh, three of the cub, uh, the, the Berenstein Bear cubs, and their cousin, and you kind of like, kind of like getting, like, kind of like portion them out to get them through certain levels and everything. So, game looks pretty good. But what really out impressed me was the packaging. Um, the packaging here comes with manual, complete and everything, all that good stuff. But not only that, it comes with a little Berenstein Bears uh, booklet, like the old books from when, we, when you were a kid. So it's like a mini one. So I thought that was cool how they put that in there. So for five bucks, I couldn't pass this up. I had to get this one. So Berenstein Bears, if any of you guys have played it, let me know what you think. It's made by Namco. I think, well, is it made by Namco? It might be just published by Namco. I don't know if it's made by Namco, but... You guys let me know in the comments. All right. Now we're getting into some other juicy stuff here. So this game came out of nowhere. And by the time this video is out, I should have probably showed this game on Jason's channel. Because um, we're actually doing a pickups video in a couple of weeks here uh, from this date. You guys, you probably, like I said, you probably already have seen that video. But anyways, um, this is B-Team uh, Cartoon Squad. Now, this is a, a PAL-only DS game as far as I know, and uh, basically, think of a run-and-gun shooter, but it's like a top-down isometric game. So think of like if Metal Slug was like that, you know, you would get B-Team uh, uh, Metal Cartoon Squad. Surprise, this game didn't come out in America, and it's pretty hilarious because you have your teammates with you in the game, and it shows while you're shooting things, blowing things up on the top screen, it shows a close-up of your character's expression and everything, so it's hilarious, but uh, lots of going on in this game, uh, definitely. Uh, I would call this a hidden gem, but I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, yeah, and it was cool of me to find this. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Evan, man, because uh, he let me know about this game, and he is an avid uh, Game Boy and DS collector. So thanks, buddy, for letting me know about this game. Appreciate you. And um, yeah, man, check it out. <laughs> All right, so I picked this one up from my, my local store. Um, I can't believe I've never played this game before, and I always pass it up because of the cover. But, you know, I've been watching for about, I want to say about two years now, I've been watching the show Power. And uh, 50 Cent, uh, executive producer on that show, um, you know, really put, put the, it's a really good show. Really well put together. I'm impressed with it. It doesn't have that BS, like, writing and all, everything like a lot of other shows do. It is, it, it's, like, real and everything. So, after watching that show and everything, I decided to pick this up and... It didn't let me down. The only thing that's bad about Bulletproof, 50 Cent Bulletproof is that um, the controls could be kind of weird. Sometimes the aiming is a little weird, but I don't care about that. This game is just meant to be like fun and a shooting fun. I mean, like, just shoot everything, I guess. And like, you know, like, and, and yeah. So uh, this is the special edition. It came with like a little, uh, uh, I think uh, this little DVD has like a, some kind of like bonus documentary on it or whatever like that. But the game is solid. I actually had the sequel game, Blood and Sand, which is, actually used to be co-op online. Too bad I missed out on that. But um, yeah, this game is kind of like I would, what I would call like Max Payne, like a Max Payne type game. So if you like Max Payne, you'll definitely like this one. All right. Um, so I got this recently. Um, this is River City Girls. Um, I got this. I got the Switch version from Best Buy, and I got the uh, PS4 version online. Um, this game is actually a really good beat em up. I was really impressed with what they did with this one. WayForward and Arc Systems did a good job with these games. Um, you know, I usually like free roam beat em up games, I would say. I don't, I don't want to say free roam, but it kind of gets it's sandbox in a way you, where you open up other sections and you kind of like go wherever you want after a while. So think of like Scott Pilgrim in a way. And you know, of course, the, rig the original uh, River City uh, Ransom games, but um, this one was really well put together, and I was pretty impressed with it. Good graphics, uh, good moves, 
uh, cool boss battles, uh, good music and everything. Story, I can't really tell you about because when the, the cutscenes came out, I, I mostly skipped them. They were too silly for me. But other than that, though, it's, it's a solid beat em up game. So um, definitely check this one out, man. I think they did a good job on this one. They, they put a lot, a lot of love into this one. And uh, I heard that they this game was in development for th 13 years. So that's pretty insane. So it doesn't give me any hope for a sequel, man. Another 13 years, man. You never know what goes down. But anyways, um, River City Girls, uh, definitely something I would say you want to add to your inventory if you like beat em ups Next here... We got Freedom Planet on the PS4. I got the PS4 version because this is definitely, um, that's my main system I want to have the game on. I have the Switch version, but, you know, that was because that was available to me at the time. But this one finally got released, and I wanted, this is the main one I wanted. So Freedom Planet, if you haven't played that series, it is like, um, pretty much it used to be a Sonic the Hedgehog fan game. Uh, the, thankfully, the developers said, man, we should make some money on this game because this is like the best Sonic ever. They changed the name, sprites, and characters, and, you know, Freedom Planet, and it's, a, it's a, if you have not played this game, I'm telling you guys, if you're a fan of Sonic and games like Sonic, I don't, I want to, I don't want to compare it to Sonic, but you know, if you're, if you like games like Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, this game will blow you away. Seriously, uh, Freedom Planet, Freedom Planet 2 is in development, but this has been in development for for a while, so I don't know what the deal is with that one, but definitely check this one out. And then we got uh, Time Spinners, which I already got on the Switch already. Just wanted this version. I was disappointed with this version. I mean, well, this physical because like the, with the Switch version got the um, uh, a manual. They didn't even put a manual on this one. They just do like a, a front page and a back page. That's it. So they show me what's going on with how they treat their the, the, their PS4 copies of certain games. They 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 make sure the Switch copy is all nice and neat. But when it comes to PS4, they're like, ah, whatever. It's messed up. But anyways, Time Spinners is a Metroidvania type game. Um, one thing I noticed that stood out about the soundtrack is really good, guys. So the soundtrack will keep you like in the game. But I haven't got that far in it yet, so I can't really tell you too much other than that. But uh, from what the footage you've seen here, you know, you could judge for yourself. It'll be something you'd be interested in. Oh man, the game I've been wanting for so freaking long. Um, finally got a physical of this one. Um, I got these from Play Asia. This is oh, did I get? Yeah, I got these from Play Asia. I had to make sure. Uh, this is Asher Strike. Well, Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger Nine for the Switch and the PS4. Um, this these versions actually came with a soundtrack in them. So the Switch version has a two disc soundtrack, and the PS4 version has a, a one disc soundtrack. And these games, if you like, heard of companies like Indie Crates or whatnot. Indie crates are the, are the people who used to make the Mega Man games for Capcom, at least some of them, like Mega Man X series and stuff like that. They are a great company, and they put out good stuff, man. I'm always interested in everything they put out. And Luminous Avenger 9 is like pretty much like Mega Man X, the Mega Man X games, but like just even, even more insane. Lots of fun. Um, funny thing about this one, I can't tell you too much about the story because I actually skipped the story in this game. The story is a little all over the place so i got st for me it's mostly about boss battles and stuff like that i love the boss battles in this game and um kapan in this game he's he's on point man he's a tough he's a cool dude i mean a, a main character but um if you played this guy game let me know what you guys think about luminous avenger 9 this is pretty much my, was my game of 2019 so i um, happy to have this um this is probably my favorite item so far that i've gotten uh for 2019 i was really wanting this game all right, next game here, uh, Watchmen: The End Is Nigh. Uh, this is a uh, this is a beat 'em up game. Uh, I remember this was a, when this was DLC back in like early 2011, 2012 ish, um, or maybe no, even before that. It was like 2009 or 2010. I can't remember. But anyways, um, beat 'em up game where you play. It, it's a prequel to the the movie. You play as Warshak and uh, what's the other guy's name? I can't remember. Uh, Warshak and Night Owl. And the uh, reason I looked at this because uh, after watching the HBO series that just recently came on, that was really good. If you haven't watched Watchmen on HBO, uh, definitely give that a look at. Um, and I picked this up. This was like uh, $3, so I said, why not? So a good beat-em-up game. Uh, definitely a character you want to play as Warshak because he has some brutal, some brutal finishing moves in this game, and it's like insane. So, yeah, definitely check this game out. Uh, when I went to go visit home in December... Uh, last year uh, me and my mom went to the Goodwill store and I was like alright let's check out this Goodwill and see if they got any games 
And it was funny. I went to the section. They actually had something decent. Uh, L.A. Rush for the Xbox. Uh, I picked this one up. Uh, this one is more like a free roam Need for Speed game I would compare it to. Or maybe I'm trying to compare it to something else. But anyways, it has a little story mode and everything like that. It was really cool. Um, I'm surprised I didn't pay attention to this game uh, back when it first came out. Because this is actually really good. I was pretty impressed with it. Um, it has the guys from, if you remember that, that, that show called, I think it was called Pimp My Ride. Uh, those guys are on, on here and everything, so, you know, I don't know if Exhibit's on here or whatever, but, you know, it's just, it's just kind of cool that they put something like this together, so, um, anyways, uh, Xbox version, uh, uh, maybe one day I'll get the PS2 version of this game, but, uh, this is one of those games that kind of, I think, I feel got overlooked because, um, I want to say the sixth generation was saturated with a lot of racing type games, so, uh, anyways, this one might got looked over, but let me know what you guys think of this one if you played it. All right, so my friends from Evil Pixel, they put together a lot of good videos. Um, hold, I'm wanting them to put more videos together, like more of them, because they seem like they, they may do a, like one video a month. But anyways, uh, because of them, I picked up this game, Viewpoint, for the X, um, I was about to say Xbox, for the, the um, Genesis. Uh, Viewpoint is a, a isometric shoot em up game. Uh, not too wild and everything. Pretty cool game, but what I really like about the game, it has a nice little soundtrack to listen to. So... Um, and this has a soundtrack that's, uh, that, that's different from the PlayStation version of the game. This soundtrack, I th think, is actually better on the Genesis version. But, um, you know, like, let me know what you guys think about this one. From what I've been hearing, this one allegedly is, is jumping up in price. I got lucky and got this for a deal. Uh, I got this for $10. So, you know, it's actually less than I got it for 5 because he gave me a discount because I bought a bundle of stuff. So, uh, Viewpoint uh, for the, the Genesis. I was almost at Xbox again. Uh, give this one a go. All right, um, I got this one. Oops, I almost dropped something. Uh, this one, Duke Nukem Forever. I used to have a collector edition of, the, of this. Um, I got rid of it, but I figured this game I should have because of the history behind it. You know, 13 years at the time of the making and everything. I remember, I think I was in like in junior high school and I saw the uh, the trailer for it, uh, the original version. And I was like, man, this game looks great, but next thing you know like years later it didn't come out and so i mean it came out finally years later but it was a different game kind of whatever but not saying this is a great game but if it came back uh back when it was supposed to it probably would have got a lot of better ratings but it, the thing about this game is it didn't age well with people and i don't know if duke nukem is that pop much of a popular character these days in this kind of sensitive uh reality we live in now with people a lot of snowflakes and everything so it's his kind of like his comments might offend people or whatever, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, this is the last game that I've seen so far in the series. Um, hopefully it won't be the last, I mean, because Duke Nukem is here forever. So, first person shooter, check it out. All right. Oh, found another shooter I forgot to talk about, we'll bring up. So, a uh, part of that bundle I got, uh-oh, I gotta fix the case of this. So, part of that bundle I got at my, my friend Ryan's store, um, I also got this one. So you guys have heard of Katsui. Uh, it's another shoot 'em up And this is a part of the bundle. And I got this out of there. So the PS4 version. And it came with this book here and everything like this. So I guess this is like an art book or whatever like that. So Katsui. This is the best version of the game. Has a lot of extra modes and everything like that. Um, I played Katsui on the PS3. I enjoyed it. I even have the DS version. Which is like pretty much a boss rush mode. Which is insane. I'm surprised they were able to do that on the DS system, but it looks good. But anyways, this is the definitive version of the series. Uh, very good shoot 'em up, I would say. I'm impressed with it. Um, like I said, I just wish there were more English menus, but you don't really need that stuff in this game. I mean, it's all about the points and all that good stuff. So, uh, Ketsui, I got this one. Well, these are being sold on Play Asia, so if you want to pick it up from there, that's where you get it, or eBay, or whatever you want to do. But another shoot 'em up. All right, we're winding it down here. Let's see here. Twin Strike Operation Thunder. Uh, I picked this up at, at GameStop because it looked like something like it would be interesting. This is a helicopter game. And uh, pretty much, um, <laughs> the reason I picked it up because I thought the soundtrack in the game was, was good. So that's the main reason I picked it up. Um, as far as the game being good, from what I played of it, I liked it. It was decent and everything. You know, I had to hook up the Wii and everything and, and you know, get into it again. Um, but like for what I paid for it, $3, I thought that was a fine deal, you know, test something out, you know, it looks different. And this company here, Zoo, 
um, they have a couple of hidden gems in there in the library. One of the games came out on DS. I think it was called um, Zombie Seeker or something like that. I mean, I bought that game at half-price books. And the next thing you know, I didn't even talk about it. And the next uh, three, four months, uh, everybody started finding out about the game. Price started raising for it. So I'm not saying that's going to happen for this game. But, you know, it was something cool to look at. You know, $3. Why not? So Zoo. Hopefully, I'm going to see what else Zoo has. All right, so I got this out when I was visiting my mom, uh, Kate West, The Vanishing Files. This is like a point-and-click adventure. Uh, I can't really say too much about it because, like I said, I haven't really played it. But, you know, stuff like this, um, even though I'm not going to play it immediately, I want to have it now so I have time for it later. Uh, it's not. I don't think it's a hard game to find, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure I picked it up because it looked interesting. And at that time, best. I mean, GameStop was having that... Um, uh, buy four um, to buy four for ten dollar type deal. So this was a part of that. So Kate West the vanishing files find the clues to solve the crimes All right, Kate, hopefully you're not a dork, but um, it looks it looks like something interesting like old-school um, Point-click adventure. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'll get into it. I'll let you guys know later on All right move over gears of war because quantum theory is here <laughs> I remember when Gears of War 2 was coming out, or was it, no, it was 3 was coming out, and, uh, yeah, it was 3, oh, I make sure, and this game came out, and I think, about, I'm trying to remember, I think it was around that time, and I was, I was telling my friend, like, yeah, man, no, Gears of War is done, man, it's about Quantum Theory, and everybody laughed at me, and, uh, rightfully so, uh, Quantum Theory, it does some things right, but does more wrong from what I was told, and, um, I just, I just got it because it was just really cheap at GameStop. I think it was like going for like $3. So I said, why not? It looked like an uncommon game that I would find at GameStop these days. So um, I decided to take the plunge in it. So I think a lot of people, some games aren't appreciated in the beginning. But later down the line, uh, people look back at them and say, hey, that, that was an all right game. So I'm thinking that's what's going to happen with this game. So um, maybe it'll age well over time. But you guys let me know what you think about this one. I don't. I think it's gonna be all right. It's not gonna push Gears of War out, but you know, it, it, they try to do their own thing, try to cash in on that hype. All right, this is another one, uh, Dark Void. Uh, I got for that uh, four for ten deal. Uh, Dark Void, uh, published by Capcom, made by another company. I'm trying to look who they are if they're on here anywhere. It looks like Capcom's taking all the credit. Maybe Capcom did uh, publish and develop this game. I'm not really sure, but. Think of like the Rocketeer, or not even the Rocketeer, the Rocket Ranger, or whatever like that. Like a more modern one, I guess, or a futuristic one. Um, I like the game, and it's, it's a lot of fun, but it has a lot of glitches and everything. And some of the shooting mechanics, like when you're like on foot, kind of, are kind of weird. But still, uh, it's. I think it's a game that'll be appreciated over time. Um, it's definitely. It's hard to find this game at GameStop, like with like complete and without any like generic case or anything anything like that so that was one reason i picked it up but this game kind of got lost in the shovel because i remember at the time street fighter 4 was just coming out and um nobody cared about any anything else at that time street fighter 4 was a big deal so months later when this game came out because it was it showed advertisement for it in the street fighter 4 manual but when this game came out I, it's just nobody really cared so uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's what happened. But like I said, maybe it's one of those games you can play later. So, oh my God, this is a good game. All right, man. Fox, if you're watching, man, uh, my buddy Fox uh, found this for me. Um, this is the Mega Man arcade games on one disc. Now, I got this because I wanted I like I wanted them to be separate from what they were. Now, if if, if you if you're thinking about like how can I get these games, well, you probably already have them if you have the Mega Man Anniversary Collection. Mega Man Anniversary Collection had the arcade games as unlockables on them. So, uh, like I said, if you have one of those collections, um, you you already you got the games. But these are just the arcade games standard by themselves on the disc and everything. I thought that was really cool. Um, these uh, I never saw these in the arcades, and um, they did come out to some arcades in America. Uh, really easy. Uh, I mean, versus games. You basically, you can have two players and you're just going against the Robot Masters. That's it. So, remix the level themes and all that stuff. Robot Masters are s slightly different or whatever. New animation, stuff like that. But, uh, it is Mega Man. It's pretty much Mega Man in the arcade game. And what you would think the Mega Man arcade game would be? All boss battles. So, a lot of fun. Uh, this game goes all the way. It's two games in it. 
And they go all the way up to Mega Man 7 robots, I think. Yeah, I think they stop there. I don't think they go to 8, but... Anyways, good animations. Uh, Mega Man versus. There you go. Alright, so next here we have um, Ace Combat uh, uh, Assault Horizon. <laughs> now, a lot of people didn't like this game because basically what they did with the Ace Combat series, they, they're more like... I don't want to say like flight simulators, but uh, they're more like a, they're just, it's hard to describe them. Just think about this game like the, like, like, um, this is pretty much, I would say, the Call of Duty version of Ace Combat. So they added all the story into it and um, <laughs> it, it's fun as hell. I mean, but people who played the original Ace Combat games didn't like it because it wasn't like them. It was, this game was more action oriented and it was crazy arcade action. It was a lot of fun, uh, lots of talking going on. Think of like Top Gun or something like that, like the action movie Top Gun and all that stuff, or even like the new one that's coming out, Maverick, probably. Uh, lots of action. Um, this game's very campy. Uh, but like I said, it's the Call of Duty version of Ace Combat, and that's not a bad thing. I thought that was a good thing. This is probably the only Ace Combat game I'll play. Well, no, I actually played the other ones. I mean, I played 4, 5, and, and 0. But this one will probably be my favorite because it's more action-oriented, and I like that. So Ace Combat Assault Horizon. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this one. All right. <clears throat> Next up here is Help Wanted. I got this from local GameStop. I'd never seen this before. I think this was like 99 cents, and it's made by Hudson Soft. So I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't see too many Hudson Soft uh, games at GameStop or any that I could think of. So I decided to pick this one up. This one has a little story to it. I think there's like a meteor uh, about to crash on Earth or something like that, and, and people are trying to find jobs or make enough money to, I don't know. I can't. I didn't watch all the story, but it did look cool enough, and it has some fun mini games on it. So I said, "Why not?" You know. So for 99 cents, you can't beat that. Um, but help, help wanted 50 wacky jobs. So that means I'm hoping that means like 50 mini games. Hopefully, at least half of them are good. So far, the ones I played were good. So, but I didn't get to play all of them. But uh, there was one that was funny as hell. I think where you were like a. I think it was this game where you're freaking throwing. Um, no, that was the other game I'm going to bring up. I'll tell you about that one in a second. But anyways, uh, Help Wanted. All right, Little League World Series Baseball 2008. I picked this one up because I thought it looked cool. It looked like it would be a fun baseball game. I don't really have any baseball games, but, you know, this one looked like it was fun. So I gave it a chance. Uh, not really much I can say about it, but um, um, I, don't, I, I should have looked at more information about this because I hope it's not one of those motion controls where you have to swing the... The controller like a, like a bat that's kind of annoying but it doesn't have anything here about motion controls but yeah uh, yeah I don't know you guys let me know about this one uh, Kokoro's uh, Magic Circus this is a gallery shooter game uh, I picked this one up because I thought it looked, it looked interesting it, like I said it was cheap and I never seen it before um, it kind of reminds me of if you remember that game uh, I'm trying to remember it came out for PlayStation point blank kind of reminded me of that um, But you know That is probably not like that at all. Well, yeah, it is but you know It's just it just from the premise. It looked like like it was like a point blank type game. So uh, Let me know what you guys think of this one Here's something I got at um, GameStop I was surprised I found so they actually took in this Wii steering wheel and they kept the box usually they throw this stuff out, but this GameStop that I go to is pretty smart because they know that keeping this type of stuff will help sell the items. If they took the steering wheel outside the box, and I know it's hard for you guys to see it, sorry about that, I'm just zooming right here too. Um, it, it could get lost, they had to hang, up it up, hang it up on a wall, it's kind of big and everything, so it's good that they actually just took it out. I mean, kept it in the box and it looks nice, and this ended up being like five, six dollars, I think. So I got that alongside the next item here. This is on the the cover photo of the video. Whoa! Almost dropped it. I dropped the mic though. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Nino Cooney mm -hmm. Collectors Nino Cooney 2 Collectors Edition. This is uh yeah, the year. Uh, yeah, the collector's edition. Uh, this I haven't played this yet, but the reason I decided to pick this up was because um GameStop usually Saturday nights 
um, pretty much sat Saturday night, Saturdays, Saturday Sunday morning, they'll have a drop in price of something, and usually it's a, it's a lot of items, but um, or some items I would say, but mostly like um, well it could be anything actually, so I don't take my word for it, but um, the the item that was discounted was this, and um, it ended up this was originally two hundred dollars. End up becoming thirty five dollars, and I was like, man, for thirty five dollars, why not? You know, that's a good deal, and I mean, that's easy to take a risk on it. Something like a collector's edition of it. Now, I'm not gonna unbox it here. You know, if you want to see an unboxing of this, you know, you can check out Happy Console Gamer, uh, Media Glitch, Joe Valley. They did some cool unboxings for this game. So, um, but the reason I don't want to unbox it right now because it's too much of a mess right here, and I don't want to lose nothing. I just get it put up and I'll deal with it later but anyways most of you guys have already seen what it looks like anyway so you know uh, Nino Cooney part 2 I believe it's an action RPG I'm not really sure too much about it but I'm very interested in trying it out um, but yeah uh, let me know if it's if it's worth my time I think it will be so um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get back into more action RPGs I just beat Star Ocean uh, first departure uh, I actually played that game on PSP and beat it years ago but just playing again got me pumped up so this game, I believe, was developed by Level 5, which did one of my favorite RPGs of our time. Action RPGs, Rogue Galaxy. So, um, looking forward to this one. Gosh, I wish Rogue Galaxy had sold us a few more, man. We probably would have got a sequel to it, but it had a good ending, if you understood it. A lot of people don't understand the ending of Rogue Galaxy, but that's all good. Next game here I've been looking for for a long-ass time on the, on the Switch. And this is... Uh-oh. Almost, Mike almost fell again. Ease eight, Lacrimosa of Donna, Dinah, Don Donna, uh, for the Switch. And this Ease game is very dear to me. I really love how everything happened with this game, being off stranded on the island and everything like that. The different characters you get to use. It just was a very uh, put together game, and the soundtrack is just is just amazing. This game had a lot of great like story arcs in it. I remember, I think it was the end of chapter three. For at the end of chapter three, you guys know what I'm talking about. When you get on top of the mountain, oh man, what a beautiful sight, dude. I mean, just seeing the other side, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, but I beat this game on PS4 and I, I picked it up again because, you know, playing it on the Switch, I wouldn't actually want to play it again. And playing it on the Switch is kind of cool and everything. I am on the Switch hype train. I like playing a lot of these games portable and everything like that. But just remember, the definitive version of this game is the PS4 version, as far as I know. Um, the Vita version is actually the vanilla version, so it doesn't have the extras. But this one um, is pretty much like the PS4 one, just not as good looking, but that's totally fine. I mean, um, like I said, you know, this game is awesome, and I hope more people get to play it. East 9 um, is, is probably, I think they're in talks and pouring that, pouring that uh, I mean, uh, translating that over here. Uh, in America, so hopefully that happens pretty soon. Uh, next game here, Shaq Fu uh, for the Switch. Uh, this was being cleared out at uh, Best Buy for five dollars. So when I saw that, I immediately jumped on it. And a couple, I think a day later, like they raised the price like the seven, nine dollars or whatever. So it was only for a day. It was like five dollars. So I picked this one up. Shaq Fu, the Legend Reborn. Uh, I was actually one of the people who actually enjoyed the original Shaq Fu. I thought it was actually cool. The Super Nintendo version was cool. The other versions, uh, I don't know. But I thought Shaq Fu was fun. And, uh, you know, that's when the Shaq was all about the, doing all the karate and everything. It was pretty hilarious. But this is the better game of the series. So definitely I would say more people would probably get into this one. Um, Shaq Fu, Legend of Born, uh, Wired Productions. Um, yeah, there's nothing really else to say about it. It's, fun, it's a fun beat-em-up. Unfortunately, it's a beat-em-up that's not two players i mean they gotta make make it two players even if they make it like a, an alternate alternative shack or something like that you know they could have bought that out but you know it's all good though so anyways shack food if you see it for a good price uh pick this one up all right man we're still we still got a lot to go guys so hopefully you got your popcorn and all that stuff and your drink ready because man anyways let's keep going here some of you guys might have already seen some of these games in the earlier videos I did, but I want to add these to the pickups. So, um, next year we have Gigantic Army. Uh, I talked about this in the video. Uh, this was uh, this is being sold from Play Asia. Um, this is a fun game. If you remember games like Cybernator and things like that, you know how this game is. It's a lot of fun. Um, 
the story in this game is more text savvy than anything. Like you get a bit of text before the first mission and a little bit of text after you beat the first mission. And it goes like that. So really the, the game's main focus is the action and everything, the arcade action it has. So a lot of fun. Kind of reminds me of another game, Wolf Fang as well. If you guys have played Wolf Fang, it's, like, it's kind of like that as well. But um, but definitely I would say pick this one up if you, if you like what you're seeing here. Uh, it's a cool game. I think it's fun. Um, and you guys let me know what you think of it. Um, all right. Calderas Blaze uh, for the Switch. <laughs> oh, man. You guys know I got the PS4 version and I got the PS3 version of this game. Uh, to have it on the Switch as a portable, I, had, I, I jumped on it. And uh, I don't regret it. This is a really good game. Probably up there with one of my top 10 favorite shoot 'em ups of all time. Uh, I, I, I am going to add it to that list. I'm not going to tell you where it's at on that list, but you know, because that, that's a hard list to put together pretty much, you know, putting your top top 10 favorite shooters together. They have to be in the right order and all that stuff. And you, they have to be where you don't, you don't feel like you're going to change them. So it takes a little bit of time to really decide, but this is definitely on my top 10. Uh, one of the best shoot ups I play, uh, good music, great boss battles, hilarious game. Uh, I love the whole system where you don't have to like uh, find your web shoot, shoot, you get your weapons, all, all all of your weapons in the beginning of the game. You just power them up as you go. So for in other games, how you have to shoot monsters and then you get your power-ups like that. And they and sometimes they're random. It's not like that in this game, which I like. I like having your full arsenal. You just got to power them up. And that's what this game is about. So if you haven't played this game, uh, I mean, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you want to get into shoot 'em ups um, I can say this is a game, good game to start with. It gets tough. It's one of those games that has a good learning curve. Like it is not too hard in the beginning, and then it kind of like gets harder as you go on. So not too crazy, but it does. But I want, I want to say by the, I want to say by the third or fourth level, it just starts to become a bullet hell. So a lot of them bosses are crazy. But anyways, check this one out. Uh, an exclusive for from Play Asia on the Switch. Next game here, I got out when I was visiting my mom. Uh, GameStop uh, Tornado Outbreak. You guys probably saw in another video. I got the PS3 version. I never, I didn't know it was on the Wii, so I wanted to give it a go. Uh, it was like two, three dollars, something like that. It was part of the GameStop deal thing, so uh, buy four uh, for ten dollars. So I went ahead and picked it up. Um, from what I remember, this game was kind of like considered like um, you played a Katamari. It's like a, a reverse version of Katamari, where Katamari you're building stuff. This game you're just destroying stuff. So. It might be fun. Um, like I said, um, let me know what you guys think of this one as well because um, I'm not too savvy about the whole gimmick Wii controller. I, I wish they showed the classic controller on the back here when it shows controls, but I don't know. We'll see. But even if it's if it's not that great on the Wii, I have the PS3 version I can choose too and see how it controls on that. Plus, on that version, you get trophies, which I, I love. So, Tornado Outbreak, let me know what you guys think of that one. All right, so this this was the game I was going to talk to you guys about earlier. I almost got the the mini games mixed up with this one from um, Help Wanted. So um, this is Calvin Tr Tucker's uh, Redneck Jamboree. Um, <laughs> I seen this game years ago when I lived in Texas when it was when it first came out. I was like, what the hell is this? And of course, I passed on it. But as you guys know, I've been looking at stuff that has the publisher Zoo on it, and this has Zoo on it. So I wanted to take a look at it, and this game is it's pretty hilarious. Um, one of the mini games in this game is that you go fishing, but you don't do it by the regular means. You do it with dynamite. So you're throwing dynamite in the water and blowing the fish out of water and everything. So it's like crazy stuff like that. Pretty hilarious game. Um, <laughs> there's nothing I can really else say about it. It's a bunch of mini games, and uh, you have to judge for yourself if they're worth playing or not. But I thought the one where they're blowing, they're throwing like dynamite to get the fish out of the water is hilarious. So. Um, I guess it's a guarantee to catch, right? If you blow them out of the water. But anyways, Redneck Jamboree for the Wii. Um, it should be under $5. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have played this one. Alright, next up we have Deadly Creatures. Deadly Creatures, I picked this, one reason I picked this up is because of Billy Bob Thornton and uh, Dennis Hopper uh, did the voices for this game. They play as the human characters. And, um, I hear that it's a decent, solid game, um, but when I actually started playing it, um, playing as a spider, it's just like, oh, to me, like uh, anything like like a ratnik like that, you know, more more than four legs is really just creepy to me. So playing it, it's not, 
it, I, it's a good game, but it's not like I just don't like playing as a spider and looking at a spider all day. It's just it grosses me out. But anyways, you yeah, there's I, nothing else I can really say about it. Deadly creatures, um, uh, spider versus snake, uh, snake versus scorpion, just all kind of stuff like that. So um, anyways, like I said, the best thing about this game to me is that they got Billy Bob Thornton, Dennis Hopper, uh, rest in peace, and um, the game's another one on a cheap at GameStop. All right, so you guys remember my whole thing with GameStop, where they 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 gave me, they tried to give me a generic case for Dragons Dragon Age Two, but uh, this I'm just adding this for the sake of it being in the pickups video and everything. Um, I'm actually replaying the series again because um, I want to get to Inquisition, the third game, because I hear they're making a fourth game. I beat the first game, but my data was lost, so I'm gonna go through that again, create my Grey Warden again, and, and just kind of like um. Just get back in it again. I actually almost platinum the first game. I was missing two trophies to get the platinum. It was the one where you had to, you had to take a certain amount of hit points from a character, and um, when you attack them, and then the other one I can't remember. It's been years, but I lost my data. I gotta do it, do it again. So then I'm gonna transfer that data to pay, play part two. Air part two is wasn't everybody wasn't impressed with it, but I'm gonna enjoy it because I just like how they uh, bio Bioware put these games together. So. And then on to Inquisition. I'm going to play the PS4 version of Inquisition. But anybody in the comments, though, when I, let me know how do I transfer my data to the, the PS4 version of like any choices I made in the previous games. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that because, uh, like, Alex there, Alex there, I think his name from the first one was, uh, I made sure he became king. And I don't know if he, if he, if your decision will be there in Inquisition. So, anyways, just let me know in the comments. So. All right, so next here we have Metal Storm. I've talked about this. This was sent to me by Castlemania Games. Um, Metal Storm was a game that was released in the early 90s for the Nintendo uh, uh, adventure game. Pretty cool. Um, they re-released it because the, the game is actually really expensive. The original game is really expensive now. I think it goes for like over 100 bucks. But this collector's edition, you can get the game again with a lot of cool stuff. Action figure and all that stuff. Stickers and... What else do we have in here? There's a lot of a lot of little cool stuff in here. Uh, I was pretty impressed with it. But for more detail on that, check out my video I did on this game called Newish Games. And Newish is like games like being brought back and everything. So uh, Metal Storm um, for the Nintendo. <laughs> Castlemania Games has an exclusive blue uh, cartridge for it. So I thought that was awesome. Uh, next game here, I think I pronounced this. Just shoot them up for the, uh, the Vita. Uh, Hybroxia, Hybroxia, however you want to say it, uh, limited edition. Um, so a lot of people don't know this. Play Asia is actually going to be releasing a lot of um, Vita games up until 2022 at least. So there's going to be a lot of Vita games coming out still uh, from Play Asia, and not only that, they're going to come in these nice little boxes with soundtrack, number certificate, manual, and all that good stuff. But this shoot 'em up game, I didn't really um, care for that much. I mean, I was kind of like, meh. You know, it's okay. You know, but it's not anything you really can jump up and say, hey, let's play this game. Um, yeah, just, just, I didn't think it was that good. It's okay. But like I said, when you play a, a certain caliber of shoot 'em ups, man, it's hard to go back and play ones that I kind of feel like are like step backwards or maybe somewhat generic. But um, uh, I mean, but people don't care. I mean, obviously, this game sold out from Play Asia, so some people like it. I mean, a lot. So uh, that shows that. But um, anyways, uh, Check this one out. Um, I can't really say too much else about it. You know, it's just I, I lost a lot of in interest in it. So, um, but maybe I, maybe I can get back into it. I don't know. You guys let me know. So, okay, guys. So this next game here is Lost Dimensions. This was sent to me by my buddy Mike, um, and um, I haven't. You know, it was weird about this game. I remember uh, briefly hearing about it back when it first came out because I, I think it actually came out for the PS3 as well. And I think the world is going to end or something like that in this game. You have to try to stop it in a certain amount of time. You have a team of people. I can't really remember too well. But, um, well, a good thing about the Vita version is that it is uh, PlayStation TV compatible. Um, don't really hear many people talk about the PlayStation TV anymore these days. Maybe it's because they, because they become so sought after and they're expensive now. But I remember when those things were like free, pretty much like discounted everywhere for like 20 bucks. Now everybody wants them. I think that happened really because they were able to fully mod it where it could play every Vita game. So that's probably one of the reasons why. But anyways, Mike, thanks for this, man. Appreciate you, man. Lost Dimensions. Um, I'm looking forward to trying this one. So, um, yeah. 
looks interesting. And then, oh yeah, Atlas jumped on it too. So there you go. It's published by Atlas. So you know, Atlas doesn't put out no junk. At least uh, we don't think they do. But anyway, so this next item here, next stuff here, my buddy Kyle hooked it up as usual, man. He always looking out for me. And uh, he finds the best deals on stuff. And he found Starlink uh, for the Switch at Best Buy, the collector's edition, $5. That's right, $5 for this. They're trying to get rid of them. They didn't want them anymore. They, they're sitting on them. And uh, we both felt that this is one of those games that will be appreciated more in the future. And right now, I just... I don't know if this game came out at a bad time or whatever. It's a well put together game for what, what I've seen of it. Um, and I love the whole touch with the Switch version, adding st like Star Fox to it, Fox McCloud. Um, but I was really hoping for a Star Fox game. You know, like when this game came out, we everybody was hoping like Star this is going to be Star Fox. But Starlink, um, it, 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 like I said, this, this collector edition is really cool. I got the, the Air Wing, Star Fox Air Wing in it. And I guess uh, each version had their own exclusive like item with it. But this is one of those games that people were saying, like, it's better to get the digital version because you get more content on it. I was like, whatever, man. This is better to get because you get the physical items here and everything. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this one. I haven't really got into it yet, um, but I'm happy to have this item here. And $5 at Best Buy, man, that, that is a good eye because uh, a lot of people are probably missed out on this one when they were clearing this at, out at uh, Best Buy. Next up. Rage 2. He said Rage 2. And um, I, I remember briefly playing Rage 1. Uh, I remember even before Rage 1 came out, there was an episode of Breaking Bad, I think, where Jesse was playing the game before it came out. And everybody's like, hey, everybody's like, what game is that? Or was that Anarchy or another game? I can't remember. Anyway, Rage 2. On the cover here, it says, Be Kind, Rewind. I thought it was going to come with a VHS tape, which was pretty hilarious. But uh, I haven't played it yet, so you guys let me know what you think about this one. Um... It has a cool cover to it, and it has that VHS uh, cover on. Oh, it says VHS, so <laughs> on the cover, so looks pretty insane. I love, the, I love the how they Bethesda, Bethesda did the cover for it and everything, or if they did the art for it. But uh, yeah, man, um, looking forward to this game. One player, so uh, it's a one player experience, no multiplayer. So it's probably this game probably has a lot of detail to it. So can't wait to try this one out. Oh man, Philosoma uh, for the uh, PS1. I had I have this game, uh, and uh, it's a really good game actually. It's a horizontal and vertical shooter. It switches up between. It's one of the first games I've seen that, that ever do something like that. And Japanese version here, um, very. Oh wow, has a nice little manual in there and everything. This manual looks tight. Of course, over here in America, we probably got a black and white manual. If I from what I remember, I can't really remember. But Phil Soma, really good shoot 'em up game. Um, one of the first ones that actually came out on the PlayStation that I remember, at least in America that I, that I remember, and it actually got a semi sequel on there. It's called uh, Phase Phase Paradox, Paradox or something like that. It's like a survival horror type of game. I got it on PS. I talked about it in the video. But uh, Phil Soma, uh, like I said, if you're into shooters, guys, uh, check this game out. It was released in America, but it's cheaper to get the Japanese version, uh, just to let you guys know. And um, the American version comes in a long box and a... No, it comes in a long box only. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. I'm trying to remember all this stuff, man. It's crazy. So, uh, Children of Morta is another one. Um, even I, I heard um, uh, my buddy John talk about this. Um, uh, entry gaming he was saying this game is kind of like one of those games like kind of like Zelda in a way are kind of close to like spark light um, which I did in, in a previous pickups video um, looking forward to playing this one uh, I had not heard about it but another company looked for in America that's releasing their games in America is merge games um, usually they're on the um, they were the releasing games were signature edition games but they found they finally branched out and it's like mostly Amazon and GameStop to release our games. So I'm um, looking forward to playing this one. This one looks like it's really story driven as well. So I think you play as a bunch of different characters and then they meet up together. I could be wrong about that, but let me know for some of you that have played it. All right. And so we got some Switch games. Uh, Into the Dead Part 2. Uh, I, I was almost almost bought this game at uh, during Black Friday. And I, I passed on it, and um, it was going for cheap. But uh, this is like a 
It's a horror game where you're constantly running and dodging enemies to get to a certain position. Um, you're trying to get to your family, uh, make it to your family, and I think your car or truck broke down. You have to go by foot. So you're constantly dodging zombies day and night. You got to rest and everything. And there's certain things in the game that you'll get a certain ending or whatnot. Uh, so there's three different endings, a good ending, a middle ending, then there's, oh, well, there's two bad endings, actually. So when I thought about what I saw from them, but um, Into the Dead Part 2, I never played Into the Dead Part 1. I don't know where that's at. They could have included it on here, but maybe that was just a mobile game. And I think this is a mobile game, too, but anyways, cool game to play on the Switch. Let me know what you guys think about this one as well. And then, awesome, man, yes. The Rockman X Legacy Collection on the Switch. Now, this is the same as the American version, just the Japanese version. You can switch the language in the game and everything. But um, you guys know how I feel about the Mega Man X series. The Mega Man X is the best Mega Man games out there. Uh, I enjoyed all of them, even the infamous one, infamous number seven. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, I let, let you guys know, seven actually plays a lot better on the Switch and PS4 because the load times are somewhat fixed. I mean. I mean, the load times were annoying in the original PS2 version, but now it's a lot better. But my favorite X game is X4. Uh, I think that game was just amazing. Blew me away. Second favorite, X2. And after that, I would say probably 3, then 1, 5, 6, and then 8, then 7 is the least. But, you know. Anyways, they're great games. If, you, if you're a fan of the series, you, you know, this, they all have good points with them. But X4 was just the one that they put a lot of money into and it shows the production values were very high at the time so um and i hate the one thing i hate though they always take a step back man they always want to make stuff cheaper or whatever x5 they cut out cartoon scenes or story scenes and they get you that crazy dialogue like while, while you're in the middle of a level all of a sudden your character will stop and it'll start giving you all this text i'm like dude like how cheap can you get but anyways guys hopefully with this series coming out and selling we'll get Mega Man x9 or something like that you know so I'm looking forward to that. Here's a game that's pretty much sold out. Hardcore, Hardcore Mecha. Uh, this was sold from Play Asia. This is the English. This game is in English, even though it says it's isn't. Is, is it Chinese or? Yeah, that's Chinese. Um, but it's, the game plays in English. Uh, sold from Play Asia. Um, if you played Assault Suit of Linus or whatever it's called, or pretty much Cybernator, it's the same type of game, but just way better, guys. Seriously. Uh, amazing game for what I've seen of it. Um, I'm gonna have a good time with this one. So uh, let me know um, what you guys think of this one as well. And like I said, on the cover here it says Chinese and Chinese plus English version, but that's the only version I know about in this game. I think it's the only version that came out. So it's just letting you know that the game plays in English and everything like that. So you can pick this up if you see it. Um, yeah, I gotta check if it has a reverse cover because it might have an English reverse cover on it. Kind of like how Resident Evil 3 did. I mean, Resident Evil uh, remake did on the PS3. And uh, play Asia did. Uh, next game here, uh, Super Pixel Super Pixel Racers, um, more like an isometric uh, racing game, pretty much like a like, uh, yeah, more like a, I guess you could say isometric. I don't know, like a remote control car type game. A very good looking game. Um, uh, and this is another one that says Chinese English version on it. So um, this is the thing about these type of games, guys. A lot of these uh, people don't know th about these games because they're only getting physical releases over in like in other in other countries or whatever like that like play Asia they release games in English and in, in Chinese so it's pretty cool um, some of those games might not get a physical release over here in America so um, like I said that's why I keep telling people look at play Asia look at the import scene because you might see a game that you always wanted to get a physical and you know you know it's over there and it's in English or whatnot so Cool. All right. All right. So next game here is Super Chariot uh, for the Switch. This is a sequel to Chariot. I got this. I actually traded uh, my original version on PS4. Me and Marcus traded for it, I think. And um, I had that version. I had no idea a sequel came out to it uh, for it. And um, this game is uh, just more the same, but only better. So. Um, Get a two-player chariot. I mean, the game is really shines when you have two players on it and everything. Like a draw on the chariot. That's where the, most of the uniqueness come in. But uh, I'm just surprised. I never knew about this game. And um, my buddy Kyle, he's keeping me laced up with information all the time with this. So I appreciate you, bro, man. Super Chariot on the Switch. Um, only released in PAL territory. So it's, if you're a fan of Chariot, 
You probably didn't know this got a physical release. A sequel was made and it got a physical release. Oh, let's see here. How do I pronounce this one? Uh, Eglos? Eglos? Um, for the PS4. Uh, this is made by, uh, or published at least by a P-Cube. And uh, uh, I've seen them release stuff before. So it kind of reminds me of uh, Monster World. When you guys have played those games, it's kind of like that, uh, I would say. And um, Monster World without the monster, you turn into the monster. What I recognize about this game mostly, though, is uh, the boss fights. You know, when it comes to these type of games, I love the boss battles. Now, I'm not sure if this is a Metroidvania type game yet. Uh, I haven't got into it yet. But I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, I think I think I'm going to actually like this one better than Monster World. Because Monster World, for me, in those games, I just didn't like turning into the monster. I just wanted to be your regular self or whatever. But I don't know. That's just me. But, you know, maybe I'm missing out. I don't know. But uh, here's another one that you guys might want to check out. So it's on the cheap, too. It goes for like $12. So it's pretty awesome. All right. Last but not least, the game I uh, that wait is this the last one? Yes, it's the last one. Oh my god! I can't believe we got through this video finally. This is insane. I think this is my longest pickup ever. But uh, this one, we found out about this game because of Kid Shurukin, and um, uh, he he did a video on this. This is a uh, hold on, let me pronounce it right. Gamera 2000 for the the PS1. Now. You're asking, like, probably, oh, Reggie, what is this game? Well, I've never heard of this before. Well, if you like Panzer Dragon Saga, think of, like, a Panzer Dragon Saga on the PlayStation with FMV scenes, real actors uh, doing scenes. And uh, it's in English. They talk in English and everything. They have subtitles in Japanese, but the, the game, it's in, they talk in English and everything, so you can understand what is going down. And um, shout out to Kishiruki and man, my buddy Kavi, because this is, like, man, like, I would have never knew about this game. I mean... I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have like friends that are like like looking out for this type of stuff and everything so you know we share information with each other and that's how we find out about a lot of these games that we never heard of before so um, uh, you guys know I'm a sucker for FMV you know I was pretty much sold on it with the FMV scenes you know I just I'm trying to get a lot of PlayStation 1 games uh, that have FM, FMV scenes in it because I love I thought that was like kind of the transition between uh uh, video games and movies back in the fifth generation era when the PlayStation came out, you know, like video games weren't really like talked about in Hollywood. But when the PlayStation came out and FMV and video get mixing it together, like Resident Evil, for example, people started, other people didn't play video and started looking at this uh, type of stuff. They're like, wow, this is pretty cool. So, anyways, I love seeing stuff like this. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you. And, um, wow, that's gonna do it for this video, man. I, I, I think I got everything. Gosh, I've been having this stuff sit here for so long. I mean, this is a miracle that I got this video done, and I got I can put all this stuff up now. So, um, anyways, guys, another pickups for you. Um, and also, I w I'm still doing these pickups on Jason's channel. I will mix it up and everything. I'll try to bring out items on his channel that you haven't seen here, but uh, that'll be sometime. I don't I don't know. So, but a lot of you guys don't. A lot of the people that watch this channel they don't see my channel, so uh, they'll see they'll see more people will see the stuff on his channel anyway so but anyways guys uh, appreciate you watching uh, sorry um, it is three o'clock in the morning so I'm sorry if I'm slurring my words I am tired again um, I've been watching the Ozark which is on right now on mute and um, I wanted to get this video done so now I'm, tomorrow I'm gonna start doing a little editing on it and everything but uh, uh, like I said I hope you enjoy I will keep these videos coming uh, keep you guys laced up with information about games and all that good stuff so, Radical Reggie, and good night.